fellow artists, let's pull on the Holy Spirit this morning. When you get up in the morning, good morning, Holy Spirit. I'm pulling on you for the day. I'm pulling on you. <laughs> I'm pulling on you. I'm pulling on your grace. I'm pulling on your wisdom. I'm pulling on your strength. I'm pulling on your endurance. Come on, you teachers and educators coming to the end of a semester. Pull on him. You got to pull on him. Let's go. Let's pull on the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Let's pull on the Holy Ghost. Whoa, pull on him, Jeffrey. Let's go, Brother Brown. Come on, Elder Ladia. Pull on the Holy Ghost at Raw. You, you got to listen. You got to make a demand. You got to, he's a helper. So you got to make the demand. Pull on him. <laughs> Woo! Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hey, Shandore, Baba, Mama, Mashika, Mama, Aya. Woo! Yes, yes, God. Hallelujah. Oh, Tana, Mashika, Bahanda. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, ba 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 shit, come on. That's why, that's why we wake up and we pray in the Spirit. We pray in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Pastor Christine Chavis, for getting us up early and praying in the Holy Spirit. Good morning, Pastor Gwendolyn Young, Dr. Gwendolyn Young, Rosalie Brown, Sharika, I need a daily. Let's go. Pull on it. Pull on it. Y'all not, y'all not pulling on him. Good morning, Pastor Lisa. God bless you, Tanya Shelton. We'll see you this Sunday, ma'am. Sonia Wilson, Shalise Washington. Praise God. Pull. You got to pull. You got to pull. Whoa, glory. Pull on him. You know what that means? That means you, you're making a demand. It's, listen, now this 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 just me. But I kind of see it like um like when the when the when the farmer is milking the cow and you see him pulling get that milk out I, that's how i see it that's not to in any way infer a uh, holy spirit is a cow no he's god but you're pulling you you want wisdom today you want favor today you want strategies today and so you are pulling on the holy spirit you are pulling Ooh, I'm pulling on him. Holy Spirit, I'm pulling on you. Ooh, I'm pulling on you to get these lessons. I'm pulling on you to, to know my place. I'm pulling on you, Holy Spirit. Ooh, I'm putting a demand. I'm pulling on you. My spirit is longing. My, my spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Baba Mashiach. Yes, yes. I, I'm, I'm pulling. I'm, I'm pulling. Oh, yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Woo. Shandarabaki Shokura Mama Asaya. Hallelujah. I'm pulling on you this morning. Woo. I'm pulling on your wisdom. I'm pulling on your strength, Holy Spirit. Hey, God, come on, come on, y'all, come on. Whoa, you got, you got to do more than just come to learn. Hallelujah, school of the Holy Spirit. You got to unlearn some things. So I'm pulling on you, Holy Ghost. Ah, whoa, glory, I'm pulling on you this morning. Whoa, yes, yes, yes. He's I'm pulling, I'm, I'm pulling on the Holy Spirit. I want this knowledge. I want this wisdom. I want this oil on my life. Woo, child, I'm telling you. <laughs> and I won't let you go. Yes, Yvonne, I won't let you go until you pour in me what it is I need for this last day move of God. I, I will not be left out. Hallelujah, Rashawn Thompson, I'm pulling on you. You, you, you got, listen, I want you all to get more uh, I don't want to say aggressive, but assertive. I want you to become more uh, uh, commanding of your day with Holy Spirit. 
Glory to God. Michelle Foster, I'm pulling on the Holy Ghost. Elder, I'm pulling on your Holy Spirit. Woo, glory. Yo, yes, Yolanda Roberts. I'm I'm pulling. Good morning, TJ. Makisha Harris. I'm pulling. I'm pulling. I'm pulling on the Holy Ghost. I'm pulling on him. Ish, I'm Oh, Reba Kasha Tananasia. Hey, listen, I want you to become more intentional. I don't want you to become passive. Let me tell you, we are gluttons for information. We love learning. <laughs> but, <clears throat> excuse me, we don't apply. We are not, we are not good in the application. We are great in the gleaning and the learning. We love that. We love the learning. Oh my God, I'm learning so much. But how are you applying it? How are you applying it? Pull on him and he'll start pulling on you. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, hallelujah. Dr. Christine Chavis is teaching us early in the morning. She's praying with me and I'm praying with her in the morning. God, she's pulling on the Holy Spirit. She's pulling on it. She, she takes the lessons and spends time with the Lord and she's pulling and I see that application. I hear the language and I'm praying right along with her. <laughs> Praise God. She's pulling. Oh, glory. Hear my mind. Oh, shut up, DP man. Pull, pull. Come on, baby. Pull. I feel this power. Yeah, shut under the double host. Mia, we pulling. Ah, whoa, glory. We pulling. And if we pull on him, he'll pull on us. Maku Shakataba, Pastor Jamelia Woods. He's pulling, but he's only pulling where he's being pulled. Glory to God. I'm pulling on you, Holy Spirit. And you have to be intentional. I don't want y'all to just get, you know, more information, more information, more information. You got to make some application, folks. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> You got to make application. Your mind should be changing. Your vocabulary should be changing. The way you start your morning has got to be changing. You've got your language, the way you communicate. You got to pull. You got to pull. Glory to God. He's a helper. He's not a fighter. He's a fixer. He's not a discomforter. He's a comforter. He's a convictor. Glory to God. Holy Spirit is the most powerful mind in the universe you should never be stupid you should never not know what to do holy spirit is the greatest mind alive he is the mind he knows everything about everything so you should never say well, i didn't know you didn't pull you have to pull on the holy ghost you have to pull on his mind you have to pull on his wisdom you have to pull on his strategies, his innovativeness. He's so innovative. You can't just come to learn. You have to unlearn and do new things, do different things. Glory to God. Hit him on no shade. <clears throat> Y'all not pulling. You're not pulling. I, I, I'm, I'm just I'm just telling you what the Lord said to me. Hallelujah. You're not pulling. You got to pull. You got to pull. And it's daily. It's daily. Your communion with Holy Spirit. Your daily getting up, speaking in tongues, praying in the Holy Ghost. You're pulling your spirit man. Glory to God is, is pulling on the Holy Spirit to commune, to communicate. Glory to You're not 
pulling. You got to pull. You got to pull on it. You got to change some things. You got to unlearn some stuff. You got to make application even when you don't understand. You got to be active and proactive in the spirit realm. There is no passivity over here. There is no, I got to wait. I got to see. I got, no, there's nothing none of that exists in Pentecost. You got to be proactive. Some of you have questions. I hear you, Poopy. Uh, I hear you, baby. I, I got questions. You need answers, but you're not pulling. You got to increase your time in praying in, the, in tongues. You got to pull. You're not pulling. Holy Spirit is he is operating where he's being pulled. If you're pulling on him, he's pulling on you. And if you're not getting what you need, if you're, you're not pulling on it, you're here to learn, but you have to make application. Glory to God. I can teach all day, but what good is it? If it's not changing the way you engage the Holy Ghost, it's got to change. It's got to stimulate. It's got to, you, you can't just Keep marinating meat. Sooner or later, you got to put it on the grill. You got to cook it so people can, can eat it so that it becomes profitable. You don't listen to this. You don't want this information to rot in you. You're getting so much information. You're getting some new stuff. You're unlearning. You're learning and unlearning and relearning. But how are you making applications? Glory to God. This is not just, okay, I'm sitting here taking notes. Glory, I want you to do that. But you have got to make some demands on the way you communicate, on the way you think, on the way you make decisions. You have got to make applications. Let's go. Speaking in tongues has got to become stronger and longer. Glory to God, I'm in the school of the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm on my way to Pentecost, but I'm, 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 so you, every time you get uh, to a standstill, you immediately begin to say, all right, Holy Ghost, I'm pulling on you now. I'm pulling on you. And you have to say it out loud. You always say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Who are you talking to? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You got to know who you talking to when you need which one you need. Thank you, Father. Oh, God. Whoa, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You got to engage. Engage them. Engage the Father. Engage the Son. My God, engage. You're not engaging. You're not engaging. And I don't know that. I just know it by the Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> And I'm telling you, you have got to understand this isn't just getting more information. You've got to begin to change. You've got to engage. You must fellowship. You must commune with Holy Spirit. You go to the gym, be speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. What are you doing? You're pulling. You're pulling on the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it might be somebody in the gym for you to cast out a devil. It might be somebody in the gym for you to give a word of a word of wisdom, a word of a, a word of uh, knowledge to. Uh, glory to God. You're out and about. You're just praying in the Holy Spirit. You're putting in demand. It's more than you just getting a good park. There might be someone in there that or someone that's gonna come out. That's, that's going to need Holy Spirit to speak to them through you. We are living in the spirit of God's uh, um, dispensation. This is the third day. And so you should never, when you say, I, oh, I just don't know what to do. You're not pulling on the Holy Ghost because he knows what to do. You're not pulling. You're not pulling. I'm telling you, you got to pull. You got to pull. You feel yourself getting down. You feel yourself getting overwhelmed. You got to pull on the Holy Ghost. You don't, you don't lay in that. 
You don't say, oh, I'm just having a rough day. No, oh, you got to pull on the Holy Ghost. You say, all right, it's joy in the Holy Ghost. I feel myself trying to get despondent and, and walk in despair. But I'm, Holy Spirit, I'm pulling on your joy. I'm pulling on your peace. You have to be able to make application. You can't just keep getting information. It will rot. It will rot in you. And you can't get perfect before you initiate. You got to begin to pull. <laughs> Glory to God, you have to pull. Come on, pull on the Holy Ghost. You wake up. That's why I always start with good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning. Yes, Sister Thea. I, I, I start with good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, because I'm, I'm already pulling. I'm already pulling. I need to know what to teach today. I got tons of notes. I got tons of books. But what am I teaching today? What is the need of the people today? Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm engaging you, Holy Spirit. I'm engaging you. What part of the prophetic do you want me to teach today? What part of the prophetic are they ready to receive today? I have to pull on the Holy Spirit spirit. I have to pull on the Holy Spirit to get up every morning. Pull on the Holy Spirit. You're not pulling. You've got to pull on him. And when you pull on him, he will pull on you. He's only operating where he is invited, where he is welcomed, where he is engaged, where there is communion, where there is conversation. He's only engaging those that engage him. Whoa, who am I talking to? You don't want all this teaching to get in you and rot. You don't want that. You pick up what you need. And in the same self hour, you got to make application, folks. You got to increase praying in tongues. You got to increase speaking in your prayer language at night, in the morning, in the daytime. You have to pull. Holy Spirit, open my ears. Holy Spirit, open my mind. Holy Spirit, oh, I need to receive this information, but I don't just want it to be information. I want it to be application. Application. Pull. Come on, folks. You can't just learn, 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 learn. That is what we did before the pandemic. Before the pandemic, you just learn, 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 learn. But now we're coming out of pandemic. You got to make application. And you got to make application every day. You got to make application throughout the day. You have got to pull, pull, pull. Pull on the Holy Spirit. Make application immediately. Course correct immediately. Nope, that's what I did before Pentecost. I don't do that anymore. You have to course correct. And Holy Spirit is going to bring uh, some things to you that he spoke to you years back. He brought something to me the other day. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> you are right. You indeed said that to me. You indeed said that to me. So I got a course correct. I've got to course correct because you said that. And I put it on the back burner and I did not make application as you have requested. So now I, I hear because when you pull on him, he pulls on you. And he is engaging those that are pulling. He, you got to pull. You got to ask questions of him. You have to ask. There's some, you know, and I thank the Lord. I see some of you ask questions of me. Ask the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, now when when is this? Holy ask him. Pull on him. Pull on his knowledge. Pull on his mind. Pull on his innovation. Pull on his strength. Hallelujah. Pull, pull, pull. You are learning, but you're not putting application. You don't want this to rot in you. You don't want to be another generation that gets the information and does nothing with it. Listen, you and I are not the 
first generation to teach on the Holy Spirit. We are not the first generation to know that there is some, some, something really wrong in the church world. There, we're not the first, but someone was chosen to give them information and no one did anything with it. And so the church went back into receivership. The church went back, if you're hearing me, into receivership. And so we, we get, because God will not leave himself without prophetic witness. He does nothing in the earth except he first tell his servants, the prophets. But the people take the information and don't make application don't reproduce it don't teach it don't use it in their everyday life and so the information lingers and it rots listen it's too much going into this for you to be a student of the school of the holy ghost pentecost in a pandemic and you do not yet have an intimate relationship with holy spirit I love every one of you. Yes, and, and we are falling in love with each other. But I need you to fall in love with Holy Spirit. And I need you to make a demand. I see you, Tanita. I receive it. I receive it. you got to make a demand. Make course corrections today. Holy Spirit, I hear you. Make course corrections in your attitudes, make course corrections in your approach, make course correction in your communication, make course corrections. The most powerful God of the universe that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us, but you got to course correct. Y'all saying stuff on social media that the Holy Ghost did not say. You are, you call yourself declaring, you're lying. Say what the Holy Spirit is saying. Woo, glory, you're just careless. You've got to pull on the Holy Spirit. If you want to serve as a voice, if you want to serve and say, the Lord would say unto thee, don't just make declaration. You're going to get a million dollars. No, you're not. That's not what the Holy Spirit is saying. You have got to engage Holy Spirit for words are life or death. So you got to demand, put a demand. You can declare it, but declare what Holy Spirit is saying. Only declare what Holy Spirit is saying. Only proclaim what Holy Spirit is proclaiming. Only do what Holy Spirit is instructing. Only say what Holy Spirit is saying. Glory to the man, no shatter. I pray for you now in the mighty name of Jesus that you would become aligned with the power, the person, and the presence of Holy Spirit today in the name of Jesus. Glory to the man, shukura mama haya. Woo, shaka mama haya. Course correct. It didn't take you forever. You've been in this school for over a year. We've been here for 10 years. It shouldn't take you forever. You've experienced the day of Pentecost. It shouldn't take you forever to not be mean no more, to not be codependent no more, to not be angry no more, to not be hurt no more. Make a demand. Make a demand. Today, Holy Spirit, it stops. Today, Holy Spirit, that section ends in my life. Today, Holy Spirit, I close the chapter on that agony, on that rejection, on that anger. I put a demand on the Holy Ghost. Oh, you're not making course corrections. No, 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 no. You have to make course corrections. When Holy Spirit speaks, you have to make course corrections. He spoke something to me Saturday night and he's, and he took me back to something that he said to me whoo, five, 10 years ago. And, uh, you know, 
I just be honest with y'all. You know, I heard it and, and, and possibly, you know, for a couple of days, months, you know how we do weeks. And then I, I cut, I, I slid away from that and he brought it back. Why? Because I'm making demands on him. I'm pulling on Holy Spirit. Y'all know y'all got to correct some stuff. We got to correct some stuff. We got to repair some things. We got to restore some stuff. We got to repair the breaches. We have got to heal up, folks. I don't know why I'm over here today. This is the prophetic in action, I guess. But I'm telling you, Holy Spirit is speaking to us. Course correct. Engage him more. You're getting the information. But are you making applications in the, in the day, in the day, he said, in the day that you hear my voice, do not harden my heart, your hearts in the day. Today is the day of the Lord. The day you hear my voice, you don't harden your heart. You don't keep going back to that. Oh, I don't have an issue when you declare something on social media and you say the Lord's and you and you're saying it but the Holy Spirit didn't tell you to say it. You got to you got to say what he says. That's what he will confirm. Holy Spirit won't confirm what you say. He will only confirm what he says through you. And he will confirm it and it will bring a testimony Glory to God. And it will eradicate error and it will get rid, come on, of presumption. The spirit of presumption is the enemy to the prophetic. Oh, come on. We're talking about these ascension gifts, but I'm telling you, you got a course correct, folks. Presumption is the enemy to the prophetic. When you presume to speak for God, when you presume to say something to people that God didn't say, he's not obligated to confirm that. And this is why people are disturbed about the church. This is why we don't receive prophets because there's been so much presumption. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on. Presumption. Somebody write that down. Presumption is the enemy to the prophetic. Presumption. And you presume when you don't pull on the Holy Ghost. Be a proclaimer. Be a declarer. Be a voice. But not your voice. Not what you want to happen. But what the Holy Ghost said to you will happen. You may have to get on social media sometimes and say, the Lord would say, stop your foolishness. Why? Come on, come on. That's what God does. The prophet dies. <laughs> but did the Holy Ghost tell you that? Is that, are you saying what the Holy Ghost said? And so I want, I want you to understand <clears throat> When you start presuming, go shakabai. When you set yourself up as a voice, presumption is the sin against the prophetic. It is presumptuous to say that everybody's going to be rich. That's not true. It is presumptuous to say that everyone is going to be healed. It is presumptuous. To say everyone is going to uh, to live in a million dollar house or it's presumptuous. What has Holy Spirit said? Okay, y'all not going to say nothing to me. <laughs> Presumption is the enemy of the prophet. It is the liability of the prophetic. When you speak presumptuously, when you declare a thing presumptuously because you just got happy and you just excited and that's kind of what you want to happen. But Holy Spirit did not say that. Y'all not going to say nothing. <clears throat> then you're going to get into the sin of presumption. And the sin of presumption is rebellion. It is the sin of rebellion. It's the sin of presumption. And it is iniquity. And this is why the prophet 
It P R O P H E T. The gift of profit is now going through, if you will, um, purging, going through a season of of um, sanctification. Let me just make it really simple. <laughs> presumption. Mm. The sin of presumption is the enemy. Somebody write that down. Uh, the enemy to the prophetic. And the spirit behind presumption is arrogance. The spirit of presumption is the enemy to the prophetic or to the gift of the prophet. Hallelujah. God does nothing in the earth except he first say it to his servants, the prophets. Ooh, glory to God. I, <laughs> hallelujah. And so the prophet, the eye, the eye of the body, the eye must be clear. You've got to make a demand on Holy Spirit. You've got to, you've got to pull on him to be able to stay accurate. Glory to God. Even when you um, are not the prophet, but you are prophesying or you are trying to declare or you are trying to proclaim, you cannot be presumptuous, folks. You can't, we cannot be reckless with our words because with our words, we are justified and with our words, we are condemned. And so we must be very cautious with our words. Hallelujah. Ah, time Woo, glory, glory. The great transgression of the prophetic dimension is presumption. The great era of prophets is to become presumptuous. Even pastors, teachers, apostles, <clears throat> even those in the body, you cannot become presumptuous. All right? Even as an individual believer, you cannot be presumptuous. This is, this is Holy Spirit dispensation. Whatever needs to be known is already known by Holy Spirit. And the only way we're going to know it is that we're going to get it from Holy Spirit. Not from your mind, not from what book you read, not from even your prayer time. You have to align the prophetic with the mind of Holy Spirit. It is vital. Holy Spirit is vital vital in the prophetic. You cannot fake a word. You cannot give a word to someone and Holy Spirit did not give that word. Are you listening? This is serious. Stop playing with stuff. This is not crayons and coloring books. These, this is eternal purpose and destiny for the believer that we would grow up into the fullness of the stature of the measure of the Lord Jesus. Ooh, Is anybody hearing me? And so presumption, presumption, when we get presumptuous, when, when you presume uh, that, that you have a word and you have not consulted Holy Spirit, then you lie. You lie to the Holy Ghost and you lie to God's people. The sin of presumption in the book of Acts, Ananias and Sapphira, whoo, they presumed against the Holy Ghost and they lied and fell dead. Ooh, just because you say a thing doesn't mean that God is obligated to make that thing come to pass. And we got to be very mindful of the power of prophets, the power of the eye, the power of the voice. You are the guide. You are the guide. 
You are not presumptuous. You speak as the spirit speaks. You speak only what he speaks. You do not add, you do not take away. You do not embellish. You do not color. You speak what spirit said and that's it. You are not responsible for results. You're not responsible for responses. You only speak what you see and you see only what you speak. That's it. And God will honor the word in the mouth of the prophet because the prophet spoke what God said. Ooh, I'm telling you, I understand where we get this from. And, and when, when, when we, when the prophet is operating in the accuracy of Holy Spirit, it says that the prophet respects and honors the place of Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Presumption is when you believe and speak something that you have no proof. You have no proof. <clears throat> A presumptuous person who stands in the gift of prophet is dangerous to the body of Christ, is dangerous to believers, is dangerous to the church, is dangerous to themselves. And we have seen so many of them. We've seen so many. I could take you where the carcasses are, where prophet gifts lie in the refuge of their presumption. Ah, my God. Presumption is, is, is overstepping your prophetic boundaries. I'm going to say that again. Presumption is overstepping your prophetic boundaries. Ande, Shama, somebody write that down. Wow, glory to God. When you are presumptuous and you stand in the gift government of profit, you overstep your boundaries. You are the mouthpiece for God, but you are not God. And the presumptuous prophet is a liability to the workings of God. Oh, Is anybody hearing me? The act of overstepping your bounds, being forward uh, and being arrogant, being presumptuous. I'm telling you folks, I see it every day on social media and I just laugh because I'm like, who told you to say that? And there are people gullible and immature who believe what you say because they will reject the true prophet. They will reject the correction of a true prophet because they're looking for the folly of those who operate in presumption. <laughs> When you say the Lord would say unto thee, you better, listen, better, B-E-T-T-A, better. You better be accurate. And the Lord would say, you are now the prophet voice. This is not fun and games. These ascension gifts have targets on them. And you, and I cannot play with the ascension gifts. Glory to God. And I'm under a true prophet, a New Testament prophet honors the Holy Ghost, honors authority, honors and can submit to leadership. Woo, Shaka, these, these modern day presumptuous folks have gifts, but they ain't under no authority. They can't be corrected. They don't have a pastor. They don't have a local church. Folks, folks, <laughs> no, no, and no. Hey, 
Shakatamahanda. You cannot presume God said something and then say, and the Lord would say, no, sir. When I say the Lord said, you better know. I only say what he says. And I'm, I'm watching this. I'm watching this. How do you get to the place that you can speak stuff that God didn't say? Arrogance. You have become presumptuous and you are overstepping the boundaries of the Lord. Presumption is a sin. Presumption is a sin. It is a sin and it creates a gulf between God and his people. Now, in the old covenant, if a prophet spoke and it did not come to pass, he was stoned. That's how serious it was. A prophet could, could be stoned for lying. Because you said, the Lord said. And when you say, the Lord says, and he did not say, <laughs> he would, listen, the camp would stone you because you are a false prophet. Now, we have all kinds of evidence uh, in the New Testament of where the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord came to pass. And when the word of the Lord came to pass, God honored that word. God honored the servant. The servant is honored because the prophet said what God said. You don't get honor for being a prophet. You get honor for being accurate. Y'all not going to say nothing. Woo, glory to God. I'm going to say it again. These folks looking for honor just because they have the gift. But your gift isn't accurate. You don't, you don't apply accuracy to the gift. Now, the gift is without repentance. The gifts and the callings of God come without repentance. But what happens is that eventually you'll fade to black because you have been proven to lie. It is your accuracy as a prophet that gives you honor. Oh, Reba Shekanamahanda. Woo, better, Dr. Cooper. You better be accurate. It is the accuracy of the spoken word of the prophet that guides. For if the eye is dark, the whole body goes into darkness. And so the prophet must not lie. The prophet must not lie. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? The prophet must not lie. The prophet must be accurate. And you must be trained. You, you have to go to the school of the prophets. Thank God for the gift. Thank God for the gift. I have no problem with the gift of the prophet. But I want to know, have you gone through the school of the prophets? What are you doing to train your eyes, train your ear? Praise God before you are released upon the body of Christ. In my shape. The prophet, it doesn't just come upon you. That's prophecy. And we're going to be talking about the difference between prophecy and the prophet. But we have to get to the place where we understand what is prophet and what is presumption. The prophet cannot be an arrogant person. The prophet is humble. A prophet is submitted. A prophet has a sweet heart. The prophet is not uh, arrogant or, or uh, presumptuous or cocky. No, 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 no. Something's wrong with that. And it's not so much just about, oh, fasting and praying. No, no, no. It's, 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 it's a humility. 
It's a humility. A prophet is has to be humble. New Testament prophet is a humble person. It's a sweet spirit. We're not arrogant. Because the gift is not what is honored. It is your accuracy. And a prophet must be accurate. Why? Because the prophet dies. Woo, y'all not going to say nothing to me. <laughs> because the prophet guides. Somebody say the prophet guides. And if the tree does not bear good fruit. Now in the New Testament, we just shut you down. In the Old Testament, we would stone you. <laughs> Are you listening to me? And, and 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 you don't you you don't get nine chances. You don't get twenty five opportunities as a prophet. And I'm just gonna warn you guys. Even when you are so the so the gifts of the spirit like prophecy, where you edify, you encourage, and you comfort, it still needs to be accurate, folks. It still needs to be accurate. <laughs> are you listening to me <laughs> it still needs to be accurate somebody write accuracy is honor somebody write that hallelujah hallelujah oh god listen to me you still need to be accurate you still need to be accurate, even in prophecy, edifying, encouraging. If if God didn't, if Holy Spirit didn't say it, don't say it, folks. Don't just don't just declare something uh, in thirty days by the month of June or by the end of July. You're gonna have so and so. Ain't the Holy Spirit didn't say that? We gotta stop. It it causes division in the body of Christ. All right. Run over to Matthew chapter number 11 right quick. Come on. Hallelujah. This is so important. When we talk about the gift of the prophet, remember the apostle is the grip. We don't see. We know. We hear. We know. I don't see. Apostles are not seers. We grip, we are the foundation, we give the strategies, we forge the paths. But the prophet is the guide. And these two are the weapons against fallacy and against apostasy coming into the body of Christ. Woo! Glory to Damando Riba Shekaba. You need training. You need perfecting how to operate the protocols of the prophet. Oh, God, the prophet is much bigger than the apostle, much bigger in the teaching. It may take me more than one week on this because Holy Spirit has so much to say about the prophet because it's the guide. It's the eyes of the body. If the prophet is off, the evangelist is off. If the prophet is off, the pastor is off. If the prophet is off, the teacher is off. The apostle must correct the prophet. Because if the prophet is off, the whole body is off. That's why the apostleship must, must understand the weight of the structure and the weight of the strategies and the infrastructures that it creates. Oh God, watch this in John, in Matthew chapter number 11. <clears throat> After Jesus had finished instructing the 12 disciples, he went on from there, verse one, to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? And Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. 
that's some powerful teaching there that I, oh, I don't have time to teach that, but that right there is powerful. Blessed is the man who is not offended or does not fall away on account of me. In other words, that dispensation of the prophetic has now ended. Watch this. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? <laughs> if not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and much more than a prophet. For this is the one that is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. And I tell you the truth, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet he who is the least in the kingdom of heaven is even greater than him, speaking of himself. Glory to God. Now, watch this. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing. I'm reading out of the NIV. And forceful men lay a hold on it. For all of the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. He who has ears, let him hear. Now, this is powerful. I need you to understand how Jesus now in the New Testament is framing the prophetic. How, how, how G John never called himself a prophet. Jesus calls him a prophet. John simply said, I'm a voice. Crying in the wilderness. Who are you? Are you Elijah? No. Are you the Messiah? No. Well, who are you? I am a voice. I'm a voice. So the one thing I want you to understand about the prophetic is the power of the prophet's voice. The power of the prophet's voice. Now, the other thing I want you to see about this prophetic nature is a little odd because the Bible says that John, he was in the wilderness he was a little odd. He wore odd uh, camel hair clothes and he ate an odd diet. But the thing that I want you to understand about the prophet is not so much what they wear, but their nature. Their nature is very different. They're not common. They're not, they're not reckless. Watch this. I love this. It says, and they're not swayed by the wind. Prophets are not weak. Listen to this. I'm going to read this again. Did you go out to see? What did you see? A reed swayed by the wind? Absolutely not. John was impeccable in the mission. He never veered, <laughs> Mary. He never veered from what he was assigned to do. Now you got prophets all over everything. Prophets want to be this. They want to be that. They want to be that. They want to be this. No, 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 no. Prophets are not reeds swayed by the wind. Mm. Whoa, I'm teaching. I'm teaching too good. I'm teaching too good. <laughs> I'm teaching too good. I'm talking about this ministry of the prophet, the New Testament, how we see this. Glory to God. This is why I'm telling you, you have got to make a demand. Angela Bogart, can I repeat that? Many trusted prophets lied during this last election and y'all believed it. It was as presumptuous as it could be. I'm going to take liberty right here because I've been very, very quiet about this. I have been intentionally avoiding this conversation, but since you brought it up, I'm going to say it. How many prophets lied? During the last election, notable prophets, notable prophets 
And it was so impactful that even now, many believers are walking in deception to believe that an election was stolen because the prophets that were notable spoke presumptuously. Now you're not going to like this, but I'm not going to move on it and I'm, I'm solid as I can be. That's the danger of presumption. That's the danger. Some of you walking around right now and still ain't got the revelation that they lied. They lied. They presumed because it was what they wanted. They wanted it. They had plotted it. They never planned for that man to lose, but God did. Listen to me carefully. But the prophets, notable evangelists, notable teachers and even today they are still they have a prophetic uh page podcast where they are still lying then they said that on the day of the inauguration that that wouldn't take place listen we have seen this reeds swayed by the wind it's called presumption folks it's called presumption and had they been Old Testament prophets, they would be stoned right now. Some have come back and repented. Praise God. Some have said it was just what they wanted. It was in their heart. They had been driven by the, the man that was in the White House prior to. And they lied. They just lied. It was what they wanted. But what a divide it has caused in the body of Christ. That is the power of the presumption of a prophet. Woo, I'm glad you brought that up because I wasn't going to touch it. But since you said it, I'm an innocent disgrace. It has caused believers within the body to be in fighting. Because rather than to say the prophet lied, you believe the lie and now you believe that what is, isn't. That's how powerful a presumptuous prophet is. Woo, y'all not going to say nothing. And some still have not repented. That's, that was a lie. They, it was presumptuous. It was presumptuous. It wasn't the will of God. I just have to say it to you. And now you got part of the body saying, well, the election was stolen. You're, that's not true, folks. Those people lied. They just lied. Woo! They spoke presumptuously. And you believed it because it was the lust of your heart. And that's why we, and now these conspiracy theories and what is going on in the body, while they are still undermining African Americans and brown, black and brown people in the Senate, and in the Congress with laws, and, and because your eyes were blinded by the presumption, whoo, my God, God intervened. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God intervened. Now, every lying prophet, every presumptuous prophet has been revealed. John never wavered. John never wavered. John was a prophet and he was in the wilderness and he had one assignment. I mean, these people got on and they were talking about the color of his hair and this and that and what was going to happen on this date and this, and this date and, and on that date and the, and the inauguration is going to be usurped. And I'm just like, these people don't even know that that can't happen. Yeah, they just got caught up. It's I've seen it happen generation after generation. And I'm telling you right now, the most dangerous thing that can happen to a prophet is to slip over into presumption. Jesus said there has not been one greater prophet than John that has been born. Why? Because he never veered. He was never a reed swayed in the wind. He never veered from his assignment. He never lied. <laughs> Good God, my time is up. Watch this. I want you to see something over in Acts 
chapter number 19, Acts chapter number 19. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. He found some disciples and asked them, have you received the Holy Spirit when you believed? And he answered, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. But listen to this question and the answer. And John asked, then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. And Paul said in verse four, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. Now, that's how powerful John's prophetic voice and ministry, that's how powerful it was. That's how powerful it still is that by the time Paul is converted and receives the Holy Spirit and is commissioned as an apostle, he runs into these disciples who were baptized by John who were still operating under the baptism of the prophet John. John the baptizer was the first New Testament prophet that we see. And up until then, his ministry never swayed. Good God Almighty, I got to go. Hey, we have got to understand that when a prophet presumes, when the prophet operates in presumption, you are a danger to the body of Christ. If the prophet is off, the evangelist will be off. If the prophet is off, the pastor will be off. If the prophet is off, the teacher will be off. And the whole body will remain immature. Oh, God, we give you glory right now. We thank you. <laughs> Holy Spirit, you are speaking to us and we give you praise and glory and honor. Now, let me help you all, some of you, to understand how dangerous a prophet is. When the prophet presumes, when presumption is in the mouth of the prophet, it is intentionally to deceive people, to blind people from reality. So don't be surprised when you still run into people who heard these prophets who still cannot see. Because if the eye is bad, the whole body is blind. I got to go. I love y'all.